Welcome back to Biz Lounge. We're with the CEO of Star India. But before we continue our chat, here's a look at how Uday spends some of the little free time he has at his home in Mumbai. The start uh, days were actually tough because he was a journalist and uh, there wasn't much money. There was not much money that time. And uh, I had an early baby also. And that time we thought, I don't know how we'll run this family. He's not ever told me that, you know, because I've done this and I've done this well, this is the right way to do things. He's always given me the freedom to think and do my own thing. Weekends, we have our meals together. In the morning, when I get up, we, my wife and I, sometimes my daughter, we have a cup of tea together while reading the newspapers, which is a, which is a regular, elaborate family ritual. We go travel. see places, we travel a lot travel together, a lot. both, you know, we drive together a lot. We took a father-daughter trip to Kashmir. I remember him telling me there that, that, you know, um, that you've been a good child. You've, I'm, I'm proud of you. You've not done anything that, you know, makes me that's ever made me wonder that, you know, oh my God, you know, like, is this my child, or I'm embarrassed, or anything. I was very proud of him on the first day because uh, I knew he'll do something well. So we know you were born and raised in Bihar. Correct. Tell us something interesting about your childhood and what it was like growing up. It, it was great fun. I, my father was an engineer, uh, someone uh, who had uh, a key role. My, both my parents had a key role in making me who I am today. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a big believer in excellence. And I think somewhere, uh, whatever I have done, I, you know, is, is a result of that. I have not ever planned my career, mm -hmm. but I have been always very focused on doing whatever I am doing exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And I think that I learned from my father. Mm -hmm. So, he, and, and he was a big believer in, in intellectual depth. Mm -hmm. So, even as a child, he encouraged me to read a lot mm -hmm. and uh, go beyond the traditional readings of what a, what a child at that age would do. Mm -hmm. So, I ended up being far more aware than most of my friends mm -hmm. uh, of international affairs, mm -hmm. you know, of history and uh, contemporary issues. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having a very distinct point of view, which first helped me as a journalist mm -hmm. and now helps me in my corporate responsibilities. Sure. What were you like in high school? Were you uh, the teacher's pet or were you a I troublemaker? Was actually, you know, in high school, you know, you'll be surprised. I was I was a very good boy, as they, yeah. as they put it. You know, to the extent that my friends would get annoyed with me. <laughs> you know, they thought that you know because teachers like me, I was I was good at studies. Mm -hmm. I didn't you know didn't have discipline issues, uh -huh. and uh, I was good at extracurricular debate, quiz, hmm. elocution. Mm -hmm. So I used to do well in all that. Mm -hmm. And teachers like people like that. Sure. So my friends thought I used to you know uh, I. I, I was too timid, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't have, my teachers didn't have issues with yeah. me. It changed in college though. Did it? It changed in college. How? In college, I became very active member of the student union, mm -hmm. got, you know, uh, got very, very active in political issues, mm -hmm. and uh, I became a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> and the university administration, my professors, many of them did have issues with me. Oh, they did. <laughs> So it was a complete turnaround between college and school. Anything else that you did in college? Any other experiences? Yes, I went to jail as part of a student protest. Tell us more. Now, you know, it all sounds so childish now, but we were, uh, there was a student union, our group was in, in, in power in student union and we had some issues. Something that started with something very trivial, some mess reforms and stuff like that. And uh, it became a serious issue. Police were called in by the administration, and a lot of us, a lot of lot of our friends were arrested. And then we went and in protest, we courted arrest. So I ended up in jail. Oh. <laughs> How long were you there? I hope not more than one uh, night. Uh, no, a couple of days. 
Oh. It came out. <laughs> Have you ever tried any adventure sports? Once in a while, yes. I like adventure sports. What have you done? The scariest one mm -hmm. was para jumping from 17,000 feet. Where was that? In Australia. Wow. What was that like? It is the most exhilarating experience you can go through. It's scary. The toughest part is when you're going up in, in, a, in a rickety plane. You never believe that the plane would reach there because usually those planes are so rickety. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're in free fall, it is the world's most exhilarating experience. Wouldn't the hardest part be actually jumping out of the plane? Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> and you actually don't jump because the instructor sitting behind you just pushes you. Sometime back we read that you went on a detox diet. Is that something that you still do? I, you know, everybody has some fats. I like to do these, you know, I like to try these newfangled ideas. So once in a while I, I do something. Mm -hmm. So I, I read about something or hear about something, a new diet plan or something, and I just try it. What's the latest? Oh, the latest is that uh, my wife and I are, uh, you know, almost entirely off carbs, very limited protein, and lots of uh, fruits and vegetables. So that's the diet. So we don't have carbs for breakfast. I don't have it for lunch. I don't have it for dinner at all. And you still have energy. Yes, and I feel very good. I do. So what, what does your meal consist of usually? I could have, I could live off just fruits and vegetables or, you know, just fruits. I really love them. So I start my day with fruits. I have lots of fruits during the day at short intervals. Mm -hmm. And uh, dinner is some vegetable or fruit. If you could go back in time, Mm -hmm. Who's the one person you'd want to meet? One of the people that I'm very fascinated by is Mughal Emperor Babur. Mm. I think he was an amazing man, you know, to come all the way from somewhere and create such a fascinating empire in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a student of history, I read his, read a little bit about his life. Mm -hmm. I think he was an amazing man. Mm -hmm. Do you surf the web a lot? Not a lot, but I do. Yeah. Yes. Are you big on social media? No. You're not. Stay away. Stay away because I'm sure it'll get me into serious <laughs> trouble. <laughs> What's your favorite outfit to wear? Oh, that's easy. Pathan suit. If given the chance, what's one thing that you would add to India's fundamental rights? Accountability of the bureaucracy. Tell us more. I think, uh, you know, the politicians in this country take a lot of flack and a lot of it is for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, bureaucracy, the bureaucracy in this country gets away with murder. Mm. And a lot of things that are not right with this country are not just because of the politicians. The, the bureaucracy and the officialdom are far more responsible for that. Mm. And if I could change one thing, I would change that. Mm. Okay, Uday, well, this was great, but we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining Thank us you. today. It was fun. Thanks. And that's it for today. We'll see you next time on Biz Lounge.